Welcome for a special episode of Fox Sports Live NRL. We are well and truly into finals time of footy. Josh Morris is alongside me. Josh, you're looking forward to September finals. I am. I can't wait for these four matches on the weekend. Even the weather's gotten better this this past week. As a player, I used to notice a difference from the normal season to to the finals because the, the weather started warming up and you just knew that the, the big games were around the corner. So I can't wait for this Friday night to kick off what's going to be an incredible round of footy. Yeah, absolutely. Let's touch on Friday night and let's start there with the Broncos hosting the Storm up there at Suncorp Stadium. Now, obviously, last week, number of these, the both sides rested a number of their key players. I suppose what I want to focus in on those, the Broncos welcoming back Carrigan and Reynolds from injury, a huge boost for the first week of the finals. Oh, it certainly is. I, I think they've played well without Reynolds. They've still got managed to get wins without him, but he is such an important part of that team that he just brings that calmness and that experience to the side. And then you get a bloke like Paddy Carrigan as well, who is kind of one of the young leaders of that forward pack. They're two massive ins. But what about the hoodoo? I mean, they haven't won uh, since 2009 and lost their last 14 clashes. If, if you are Kevy last week, would you have been tempted to just you know get that win out of the way and break the hoodoo? Because they are a real thing in football. We've seen that. With numerous teams, I think it was the Dragons down in Canberra. It took them about 14 or 15 years as well to win down there. So they are a real thing. But I just think the Broncos, uh, the way that they've gone about their business this year, I think they're a different side. And I, I really like them. Uh, and I think they'll be too strong in this one. I think it's going to be a fantastic game. I think their last eight matches have gone overs against the Storm up at Suncorp. So they will be plenty of tries. Reese Walsh, he's back. He is going to have an outstanding game, I think. And uh, for, for the Storm, well, Cameron Munster, he always seems to deliver in finals or origin, test footy. I'm expecting him to have a big game as well. And then we've got Ryan Pappenhausen mm. off the bench. I mean, uh, we, we saw him last week. He was just starting to get back, and we saw glimpses of his best football there. Um Craig Bellamy's opted to go with Nick Meany at fullback, which I suggested he may do that and, and leave Pappenhausen on the bench. He's probably going to come around uh, that 20-minute mark or probably towards the back end of, of the half and hang around that middle of that ruck and try and expose some tired Brisbane forwards. So uh, it, it makes for a wonderful game, and uh, I can't wait for this one. Yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to it as well. And that was probably one of my questions when you thought Pappenhausen would be injected into the game. Jerome Hughes is returning from injury, which means the Melbourne Storm spine is in top top notch. It's probably their first big spine heading into this match. What do you like about the matchup between the Brisbane spine and also to the Storm spine? And who's stronger of the two? Yeah, it's a it's a tough one there. I mean, so much experience there with, with the Melbourne Storm spine with Hughes and Munster. As I said, they're both won competitions, played mm. test footy, uh, origins. But then you have Adam Reynolds, who is that old head, and you've got Ezra Mam, the young uh, young footballer. He is an absolute gun. I've really loved watching him play, not just with the ball in, in hand. He is a fantastic defender as well. Uh, his running game is is probably his strongest uh, feat as well. So um, they are a little bit different, but I think um, I think it's a it's a great matchup in terms of you know the young and old going versus the the experience of the Storm. Um, but I, I just like what the Broncos have done. I like uh, the way they have played without Reynolds. Mm. Now you inject him back in. They give He gives his side a massive boost. And uh, up there at Suncorp, there's going to be plenty of Broncos fans willing a win. Absolutely. Reese Walsh stated yesterday that he has no fear about the storm coming up to Suncorp. So all will be told on Friday night, 80 minutes of footy. Saturday's game kicks off with the first of the qualifying finals. It's the Panthers hosting the Warriors at the foot of the mountains. We know that Penrith and the minor premiers, they've been in big games like this before. They're all too familiar with this. For the Warriors, it's been some time since they've been in this position. What makes it different for this time around? Oh, I think just the way that they've played all year, the defence has been outstanding. I think uh, the Panthers are ranked number one in defence, but the Warriors are not far behind in third. So, um, you know, they've always been known for their attack, their offloading ability, but it's always the, the defence that has been the question. And they've obviously, uh, under Andrew Webster, really focused on that this year, and that's made them the side that they are. Um, Sean Johnson, he's been in career best form. No one can argue that. He's he's a big chance of winning the Dalian medal. Um, 
Uh, I think everyone in New Zealand is behind them. I think I, I read today that they've uh, hired a, a private jet to fly them over. So um, they're getting uh, everything that they need to prepare the best that they can to take on this Penrith side. Um, they haven't won a finals match, I think it is, uh, since 2011 when they made the grand final. Um, and Penrith have won the last seven times against them. But it is finals time. Um, mm. And I'm looking to the wingers for each side. Uh, for, for tries. I mean, we've seen what Dylan Martini zelesniak has been able to do, um, and, and then you match that with Brian To'o and, and Taruva as well. So I think there'll be uh, plenty of points scored out wide because the defence in the middle is going to be very good. Yeah, absolutely. I think the WAS or up the WAS is trending global across the world at the moment. There is certainly a whole force behind them. I just want to quickly focus on Penrith for a moment, though, Josh, because we know that Cogger is going to be there partnering Nathan Cleary in the halves with Luai still sidelined. He's fitted in seamlessly throughout the regular season. Is this a different ball game for a young player who's sort of, I suppose, starting out in his career? You could say still he, he started up at the Knights, but being in in finals game, it's a whole different kettle of fish. Yeah, look, I think he did a, a fantastic job when Nathan Cleary was out and there was a lot of pressure on his shoulders to get uh, the team around the park and he did a fantastic job there. Now we have Cleary in alongside him and he's not that young. We've got to remember he, he did debut at the Knights but then he went over to the English Super League and got plenty of uh, big game experience over there. So uh, I like his demeanour. He's very calm. Uh, it doesn't look like he gets flustered too often and that's similar to Cleary as well. So. I, I think he'll really thrive in this final situation and um, it's a handy problem to have if Luai does come back and he's fit. But, yeah, I, I think the uh, the Panthers, I think they can run away with this one and, and I think they'll like to make a statement. They've pretty much got a full strength side again. Mitch mm. Kenny's back, Scott Sorensen's back, uh, Tango was back last week. So, um, yeah, they, they have nearly a full strength side and I think we're going to see the best of the Panthers uh, come the weekend. That is a bit of a scary prospect when you've got a full-strength Penrith side and you're going into the finals time. Okay, the later game on the Saturday is the other elimination final and it's the Sharks hosting the Roosters. For me, this is a flip of the coin. It could go either way. Points Bet Stadium, obviously, home ground advantage for the Sharkies. Joey Manu is being given every chance to be there for the Roosters. Uh, I suppose, where is this game won and lost and which way do you see this one going? Yeah, look, I... Uh, this one is a flip of the coin. I've, I've given him one more chance, Eloise. I keep saying that, keep giving him one more chance, but I've got to support the brother as well in this one. But uh, from memory, the, the Roosters have a really good record at points bet as well. So mm. they won't be too phased going there and having to play in front of a smaller crowd, albeit uh, a nearly uh, packed Sharks crowd. There won't be too many Roosters fans there to support, but that won't trouble them at all. I think the the way that they've been playing, uh, the defence in the past kind of five to six weeks has really uh, conceded not too many points and you need that heading into finals time. For the Sharkies, uh, they were in a battle last weekend against Canberra and then we saw Sebastian Chris get sent off and they were able to kick away with it. Uh, it would have been interesting had he stayed on as to how that game would have panned out. Um, I think this game will probably... Be decided in the forwards. I think whoever can get on top in the forwards uh, will go on to win this game because you've got the likes of the halves on the back of that. If the, if they're generating uh, plenty of momentum, well, then the halves like Nico Hines and, and Luke Keary and Sam Walker come into it. And we we know what each team's outside backs are capable, capable of. They've got some outstanding players. Um, for the Sharks, it's probably someone like Nico Hines who gets them the victory uh, for, for the Roosters. Uh, potentially a James Tedesco can, can seal the match for them as well. So I've actually tipped the Roosters in this one, but I think this is going to be the closest game of the round. Yeah, no doubt. I'll go down to the Y. I just want to touch on the halves again here in this game, just because the last time the Roosters played the Sharks at Points Bet Stadium, the Sharkies came out on top by 10 points. Sam Walker was then dropped after that game. He now returns in the finals time. He had that time away in New South Wales Cup. He sat out with injury as well during that time. Is he better for the time off, especially coming into a match like this, and is he out to prove a point? Yeah, I, I definitely think he's better for the, the time off. Obviously, the injury um, while he was down in reserve grade didn't help. But I guess it would have given him uh, a, a bit of time to reflect and, and he's come back a hungrier player. Uh, he knows what he had to work on. He's, I think his defence, since he's been back, has been outstanding and his attack has come a long way as well. I think he's uh, in control of himself and 
Um, you're not seeing those erratic plays. He's playing the, the percentage plays, but then you're, you're able to see that flair when he gets the chance with that try on the weekend where he threw the long cutout ball. Um, so oh, I think him and Kiri, um, the last couple of weeks have looked really good. Kiri in particular as well, his running game uh, on the weekend, he had two big runs that ended up um, you know, setting up tries or having a result in a try as well. So um, I really like the halves matchup here. And uh, like I said, I, I think if the if the Sharks are to do it, I think it's on the back of a Nico Hines masterclass. Yeah, absolutely. Cannot wait for that battle. Obviously, no Daniel Tupo either as he couldn't uh, overcome that injury. And on Sunday, we head up the M1. We've got the Knights hosting the Raiders. The Knights looking for their 10th straight win, whilst the Raiders are obviously coming off the back of a loss last week. They want to go deep into the finals uh, I suppose the Knights being on a high, does that work to any disadvantage? Do they need do they need to have a loss somewhere in that run of wins to then get up for this a match like this? Oh no, I don't think so. I think you if you, if you're on a streak, you don't want to break it. Mm. Uh, but uh, they're they're just uh, riding that wave of support from the Newcastle faithful, aren't they? And the last time they played a final there was back in 2006 when Andrew Johns and Danny Pierce were running around. So. That's how long it's been for these long-suffering Knights fans. They'll get there. They'll pack out the stadium. Uh, what's going to be interesting is is Hastings going to play? How is Ponga's uh, shoulder going to hold up? Because obviously uh, the Raiders will target him. Um, and then we see the, uh, the the Raiders there for and against. Um, obviously has been spoken about all year. But now it's the final stop. It doesn't matter. That's out the window now. It's a new whole, whole new season. And... Um, they're a gritty team. They are a very gritty team coached by Ricky Stewart. They'll go up there. They'll be confident of, of getting a victory at, uh, up there. But what they need to do is they need to drag the Knights down into their style of football if they are going to win. For me, I think the Knights will get this uh, done on the on the back of their support. I think Kalen Pongo will start. But I like the lethal left edge as well. I think Bradman Best has been in career best form. And Greg Marju as well. He, he's an absolute beast. So... Um, I'll be looking at them to to try and score a couple of tries down that left edge for the Knights for sure. Also, too, Dominic Young, he was incredible last time out and he is a great finisher too. It's worth noting the Canberra Raiders, they're going to be quite, well, they're short on stock in terms of their forward pack without Josh Papali'i and also, too, Corey Horsburgh is obviously that gives the Newcastle Knights some advantage with Saifidi there in the middle. Yeah, that, they're two massive losses and Sebastian Chris as well, mm. who, obviously got suspended for that dangerous tackle on the weekend. Uh, three big losses, but like I said, the, the Raiders, they'll give themselves every hope. Ricky Stewart will have this team ready. Uh, he is a passionate coach. I've played under him in origin, and, um, you know, before we go, before you go out onto that field, he'll have them ready. He'll have them pumped up. Um, they've got to get the job done regardless. So uh, it won't matter who's in their team. They'll have every confidence of going up there and getting the job done. It is do or die for that game. Josh Morris, thanks so much for your insight. I can't wait to chat with you next week as we digest all the games that unfold over this first week of finals. We'll chat to you then. Thanks, Eloise. Have a good day. Imagine what you could be buying instead. For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.